Good morning. I'm Amy Johnson from the Midwest Manufacturers Association office. We invite you to place your virtual name tag on using your name and your company name. If you haven't done so already, you can do this by scrolling over your profile video, click on the three dots in the top right corner and click rename. This meeting is scheduled to last 90 minutes and will be, it will be recorded and available on the CMMA website located under the events tab. With that, I would like to now turn it over to our meeting sponsor today, Business Owner Succession Strategies. Thank you, Amy. Good morning, everybody. Just wanted to uh, reach out and say uh, what a great day it is today. We've got, uh, I'm coming to you from Florida. We're coming back in uh, early April and uh, it's been it's been great. I. Uh, have been uh, doing a lot of exit planning from here as well. And I wanted to show you uh, a couple of items. We've got a, a webinar coming up for CMMA folks that is, uh, is in early May, and I'll show you that at the end. Exit planning is for people who are looking, our business owners who are looking to exit their business, not in the next six months, but maybe in the next six years. I know that uh, we, we've kind of joked about this. If we lined up uh, a lot of baby boomer business owners and asked them when they were going to exit, they'd say, oh, I don't know, three to five years. Four years later, we ask them again, oh, I don't know, three to five years. And so exit planning is creating a plan for you to think about how you're going to actually exit. Because one thing that's for sure, we're all going to exit our business. That is guaranteed. And so it's either vertical or horizontal. It's either planned or unplanned. But how much money are you going to need from the sale of your business is essentially the aspect of, of exit planning that you'll want to consider. We did a or there was a survey done, and we have confirmed it uh, during some of our webinars. The number of people who actually need money from the sale of their business is as high as 84%. That means not selling is not an option for most business owners. So how do you how do you get your business attractive enough to sell? And that is the essence of exit planning. Another essence of exit planning is knowing what your freedom point is. We recently gave a deeper dive webinar series just on this topic. And so knowing when you have enough money to do whatever you want to do for the rest of your, of, the, of your retirement, why would you risk what you do have and do need with what you don't have and don't need? And so there's this point at this intersection where all of a sudden it gets riskier to stay in business. And so... We have a four phase process that we help business owners through. And phase one is where we just get started. Getting started is where we do assessments of personal readiness, financial readiness, and business attractiveness. We create a, create a business owner financial plan with several what if scenarios in it so that you can figure out how you're gonna exit. We also plan for what happens if, if you get on the wrong stretch of road in this, this afternoon, if, you, if all of a sudden you weren't there, what, how, who would know how to open up your business? Who would know how to turn off the alarm? Who would, would, would everything continue on? And you want to be ready. And that's why we call exit planning a being in a constant state of readiness. On May 17th at 10 a.m., we're doing a CMMA webinar specifically for you. Everybody who's on this call, we're going to send you a, uh, an invite to attend. And we have a special uh, promotional offer in there that's, that's a free offer for you. So we hope that you'll consider it when it comes around. That's all I've got for you, Les. I'll give it back to you. Well, good morning, everyone, CMA members and friends, and welcome to the March CMMA meeting. You know, our organization continues to grow and succeed, and I think that's something that I'm proud to report, and hopefully as members, you're proud.
proud of that and the progress that we've made. So we're gonna to try today, we do this as these virtual meetings, is it uh, do introductions. And <clears throat> I've got the list of folks that have registered. And so I will go through that list, call out a name. If you hear your name, it's your point, jump in who you are, what you do. And we'll work our way through that. And at the end, if I've missed somebody, we'll give them a chance for them to jump in. So this really works better when we have live breakfast and we can all see each other, but it's as good as it gets. So getting started here. So Donald Berge, we don't hear a response Why we're moving on. Julio Empiero, it's pretty quiet. Mark Mueller, and then also remember to unmute yourself if you get called. Lance Bartho. We're done. Elena C is on here, I know. Yep, hi there. <laughs> and then Mark, you just heard from. So Jackie Larson. Hi, everybody. It's Jackie Larson with Card Connect Merchant Services, and I help um, businesses of all kinds, especially manufacturing, with their credit card processing acceptance. Okay. Bonnie Key Bowling. Dwayne Warner, Scott Wyman, oh, Keith, well, we know about Keith, we're gonna see him in a minute. We'll let him, in. Robert Lodge. Morning everybody, I'm with Enterprise Minnesota and uh, we help manufacturers grow profitably. So here to uh, support Keith and uh, meet everybody. So thanks for having me. Oh, great, thanks for being here. So, uh, and Richard Owen. Good morning, uh, Dick Owen from fairchanceemployer.com. Uh, we've designed a website that helps make sense of background checks and uh, gives you the compliance you need uh, when you're evaluating folks uh, to hire with a criminal record. Okay, Dan Ortloff. Uh, Dan Ortloff with Falls Fabricating in Little Falls, Minnesota. We're uh, Sheet metal manufacturer up here, uh, open to uh, any type of uh, manufacturing that uh, customers need. Great, Sue Kramer. Hi, I'm Sue Kramer. I'm also a false fabricating. All right, and um, Leslie Dingman, Sarah Hansen. Douglas Cook, David Miller, I know he's here. Hi, good morning, David Miller. I'm a commercial loan officer at Kensington Bank in St. Cloud. All right, and Mark Roulette. Joe Wolf. And this is an important one for everybody to be aware of because she's here is Amy Johnson. And why is that important? Because she's the brains of this whole deal. Thanks, Les. Good morning. <laughs> Without her, I'm not sure what we do. But uh, Kevin Zickert, Chris Folk. Here's one I know is here, Angie Brick. Good morning, Angie Brick from Roto Chopper. I'm also on the CMMA board. All right, Jessica Wells. Dan Idlebrook. Mike Fry. Kurt Gainsford. And this one I've seen, Sandy Voigt's here. Hi. Hi, Les. Sandy Voigt. I'm the director of the Women's Business Alliance. Our office is located in Little Falls, but covers seven counties in central Minnesota, um, working to help primarily women entrepreneurs, but open to everyone to start and grow their business. Right. And, and then, what, well, Amy, we had some late reservations from Glenn Metalcraft. And, and Bruce Hagberg. 
morning, Bruce Hagberg with RightSoft. I'm also on the CMMA board. So is anybody that we missed? This is the moment. So, okay, so we've got some announcements. We'll try and get through those. And hopefully there's some slides that'll pop up to go with all this good news. So some anniversaries we have for members. So for five-year anniversaries, <clears throat> we've got Apollo High School, NetV Pro, Source One Enterprises. And for 10 years anniversaries, we got Falcon National Bank and the Woodcraft Industries. And we have a new member, Krauss Anderson Insurance <clears throat> is here, is joined. And some updates of news as to what's going on. So the 2021 uh, membership directory will be available in June. So each year, we there's a directory that's put together that includes all three of the organizations, CMMA, the AMFA, and TSMA members. But what's important is that if you're a member, that you log into your CMMA account to review your company info and make any updates that are necessary. So, and I should also note here that, that there's opportunities to advertise in the directory if you'd like. And if you're interested in that, why well, just contact Sandy Cashmark at the CMA office. So the other big item that I really encourage is CMA website has a new look and you can go see it. And here comes part of it up right now. And it's just cmmaworks.org. And you can see all the different things you can find out. And some of the information that's in there is one is the upcoming things are manufacturing marketing webinar is gonna continue. So we've got another one scheduled for April 21st, and that's gonna be a presentation on outshining your competition. How's that for a challenge in 2021? So you can register for those. So all this can be found in our website. Also, the other items we have is the Youth Apprenticeship Toolkit. And this is a new piece to our website, which really explains to schools and to the manufacturers how to go about setting up youth apprenticeships. And I don't know if everyone's aware of that, but you realize that high school students age 16 and older can work in your manufacturing business. And in fact, the only federal restriction on what they can do is they can't drive a forklift and they can't operate a crane. But other than that, they can do everything else. And so this is an important thing. And the guidelines here to help you how to get that going if you're a manufacturer and like to get it going, or for people from the schools that are looking for help, how to get a hold of manufacturers. I should point out in there, when you get to the end and all else fails, there's a list of names of people to call and we'll come help you. So the other item that we've worked on is the Youth Apprenticeship Toolkit. And so this is one, well, it's the one we just did with the, sorry, don't mind me. And the next one's the K-12 Navigator. And so this one is a resource to where manufacturers put in listings. And I really want to encourage all the manufacturers to go in and list your company and note on there what you're willing to do with the schools and the students. It's real easy to do. And the way this works is that then students, teachers, even parents can go, anyone can go online and look for manufacturers and see what they're willing to do. Like, if you have a teacher that would like a uh, tour of a company, why they can go look that up and find out who's gonna do a company tour. And even you can pick how close you wanna be to finding those people. So, but I think that covers most of the announcements. And uh, so I think we're about ready to get going here. So for our main speaker, uh, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker is Keith Gottich and he's a business growth consultant who works with manufacturing companies across Minnesota to help them build and implement ISO business management systems. And I should point out that he's part of Minnesota Enterprise Minnesota, which has been a really big supporter for CMMA. So we really appreciate what they've done to work with us to help us at many times. So without further ado, I turn this over to Keith. And, uh, and even if you're not a manufacturer, we talked about this a little earlier, I think you can learn something about how to run your business if you learn about ISO. So Keith, take it away. Good, good morning, thank you Les. Just wanna confirm my presentation is showing, yes? Thank you, um, excellent. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about a model for excellence, how to use excellence, because at the end of the day, 
your customer base, your clients, they don't rave about average. They rave about excellence and what excellence feels like. So I'm going to walk you through this morning how the 9001 management systems are effective for your organization. But just a little brief background for Enterprise Minnesota before we launch into the content. Enterprise Minnesota is a statewide consulting organization that helps only manufacturing enterprises through five areas of expertise. The strategy for your organization. What are you focusing on? Where are you going? Kind of support some of the boss topic a little bit earlier this morning. Talent. How are you drawing your people, building them up and growing your next level leaders and making them accountable and responsible? Peer-to-peer -peer council activities, interactive. Sometimes a CEO doesn't have a peer they can talk to, and this is a great way to learn and build ideas together. Continual improvement, making a better day for your organization, a better day for those who care about your organization. And lastly, framing it up with a management system and how it ties together across all parts of your organization. I'm going to focus here today, but you're going to see me step into strategy, talent, and continuous improvement as I walk through this model this morning. You'll see how they fit and draw together into a full operating system for your organization. Briefly about Zoom today, uh, thank you for your ability to, to either choose video or not video and staying mute when needed. There will be some time for you to interact. We will have two breakout sessions this morning. When you are teleported to those breakout sessions, then your participation is encouraged. Um, I will give you instructions on the screen before you're uh, piloted away to those breakouts. Um, I'll ask for your reactions if necessary, um, or chat to give me some feedback on some of my topics and information. Also in the background, Amy Johnson's gonna help put up a couple polls today. Your response to those polls will be appreciated. We'll give you about 30 seconds to a minute to respond to the polls and we'll be able to share those things on the screen. So thank you for your interaction and participation as we walk through um, my presentation today. Manufacturing excellence using 9001. Just a brief background for myself. I've been in manufacturing for over 20 years. Lots of different organizations and different places I've touched. Injection molding, rubber plastics, cast metal machining, wood industry, um, electronics, box builds, high-end electronics, and a few um, even non-manufacturers in my background as well. I get to draw the experience, not just of the places I worked, but the suppliers I touched and the customers I interacted with. I get to bring their models together, their ideas together to make it a stronger system. And all those pieces together help develop excellence as an organization. And I'm gonna share some of those pieces with you this morning. Improvement grew from the Deming cycle in the 1950s. This plan do check act cycle that Edward Deming built remains a great management concept today. And in fact, the ISO 9000 management systems, all of them, 9001, 13485, 14001, the um, aerospace 9100, or even the automotive guys are all drawing from this plan do check act feeling. And we're gonna use that as our stepping points through ISO 9001 and what it means to a manufacturing organization such as yourselves. So we draw together the pieces of Plan Do Check Act and the ISO standard brings together seven key concepts in ISO terms to think about, but they group into some great areas. The planning elements, the first four and how they bring together building your organization and aiming it in the right direction. The doing operation, the excellence you provide every single day in your organization, the value add they pay for. The data you use and verify and check against, and then acting, making improvement a real thing, a real descriptive system. And this frames up how business excellence and culture exists across an organization. Why would we consider management systems or something like ISO 9001? Let's reach out to an example from a recent magazine. Um, Craft, uh, excuse me, Craft Pattern and Mold. I believe Craft was on your presentation and they gave a slide deck last time you were together. So from our magazine, we see quotes from their owner. Why implement a management system? To craft, align in the organization and making it a management tool, not a quality team member tool, not an engineer's tool, but for the organization and fitting those pieces together.
if you were considering a management system, why would you as a manufacturer implement a management system or why have you implemented? So we'll ask Amy to launch our first poll, if you would, thank you. Give it a few more seconds for it to uh, for the responses. And our results. Wow, high percentage to improve your business. Wow, you're going to fit right into today's presentation excellently well. And also why you need it to differentiate yourself grow that knowledge. Thank you for sharing your results with us and with the others on the screen. Um, I appreciate that very much. So that's the why, the why you're after those things to drive excellence and make improvement for your organization. Allow me now to step through those seven clauses of the ISO standard, but I don't want to uh, connect you in specific detail. I want to actually link you through some concepts about how they fit together and what they mean. So the first one, I want to start with the letter I for you. I want to ask you about the interested parties, those stakeholders for your organization. Really, this is the section about who cares about the success of your organization? Who cares about your business? If you would, in chat, tell me about it. Who has vested interest? Who's impacted? Who cares about the success of your organization? Employees, those we help and care about, the owner. Give it a few more seconds for some responses. Bruce's shareholders care. Those who care, primary, those things, the customers care, our suppliers care, ownership cares. These are the key things that jump out at us. There's also others that care, some a little bit lesser known, we don't always think about them. Your financial supporter cares, your banker, your investor cares about you, your board of directors cares. What if you're dealing with medical devices or government assemblies? Those regulatory places also care, ISO, UL, CE, all of these stakeholders have a vested interest in your business. They care about what happens for you. And I wanna map these together into four groups of stakeholder groups that care about your business. Firstly, the customer cares. They're the one that pay the bills. They're the one that generate your revenue. They're the ones that use your products and services. The customer cares and they're the top of our diagram here, our top of our triangle. The second group to care about, I'll call the management group. Your owners, your board of directors, your shareholders, those folks who have a direct leadership responsibility in your organization to drive it for success. The people we want to talk to every day and help them feel excellence within the organization. The third group is the group that supports the business itself the suppliers who give you your inputs, your providers on the outside, your financial backers to make sure your cash flow is help, helpful, the things that make the business operations run every single day, your, your equipment suppliers, for instance. And the last group, the employees, how the employees come together, their families and the greater community. They all have a vested interest in you. We want to deliver and return to their households so they can then give to our organizations to make manufacturers grow strong and successful. 
This is why we do this. But they're not independent groups. They're interrelated. They are interconnected. They rely on one another. The relationships have to balance. If we push too hard on customers, the balance gets offset and out of balance for us. If we push too hard on succeeding for only management, the employees and business may be stretched beyond their needs. If we focus only on being employee focused and only their needs, we maybe don't deliver what the business needs as well. We have to balance these things. We have to interconnect them. And when they're interconnected, excellence appears. Because again, these four stakeholder groups will rave about excellence. They're not going to rave about average. How do you draw and retain colleagues? How do you attract new customers? How do you make improvements show up in the business? By working through these relationships. This relationship feels a lot like this MC Escher drawing of hands drawing hands. The group, you can't, the hand can draw itself. It needs its partner to help it and grow and uh, build it together. This relationship helps us build that interconnected model and helps us frame up the pieces that make a management system extremely successful. This brings us to our first breakout room. Um, Amy's going to send you to the breakout room in just a moment. There'll probably be uh, five to seven of you in each breakout room. What I'm going to ask you to discuss is what are the key expectations that these stakeholder groups have? What does the customer expect of you? Is there, are there some characteristics or some features of expectations they have? What about the business? What are the, what are the business expectations expect from your organization, from your manufacturing company? What does management expect? What do the employees expect? What are those characteristics? When you're in that group, if one of you would self-volunteer to facilitate and take a few notes, I would love that. To then, when we come back to the large room, I'll just have each of the small group leaders kind of share for a moment one or two of the key things that they had for expectations. You'll spend probably eight to nine minutes in the breakout room, so it's not a lot of time, uh, but we will uh, be at that point. So again, what are the expectations of these breakout, uh, of these stakeholder groups? And then we'll come back, that leader will share one or two key thoughts with the rest of us as we walk through. Thank you for setting it up, Amy, and uh, have a safe travel through time and space. Welcome back. Wrong button. Are we back, Amy? Yes, we are. All right. Hopefully your transportation was less eventful than mine. I clicked the wrong button and had to jump back in. So, <laughs> um, in your breakout room, you talked about the expectations, those uh, stakeholder groups that care. So as we um, pop around the rooms, and I don't uh, know who was in which room, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of guessing here. Were there expectations when we focus on the customer or the business or the employee or the management group? So um, I know Les, you had a room, a room that you were part of. So were there any particular things, one or two key points that your room talked about for the expectations um, from these different stakeholder groups? Right, we had sort of an interesting mix. Obviously the customer, at least from my point of view, we have a customer who requires it. So we do work for a company that makes automotive parts and that's required by the automotive ISO system that outside testing laboratories be accredited. And so, so that's, without that, we couldn't do that work. So that has a huge impact, both for financial impact for us and everything. And, and I think, you know, and we talked a little bit about, you know, we have our business partners that like the banker and the accountant that are all intimately involved in what, who we are and what we do. And obviously we're a real small company, we only have nine employees. And so to the employees, this is a critical thing about our success. And, and I should point out that we are ISO accredited and we've been accredited for I think a little over 10 years. And it's been a, 
amazingly successful in terms of, I think, making us better. And, and I think your earlier term for excellence is the key. That's, our, that's one of our company main goals is a level of excellence. Thanks, Les. Uh, another small group facilitator. I can go. I was part of group three. So we had a uh, good discussion primarily around customers and employees. Uh, you know, customers always want, uh, whether it's a business or it's consumer to consumer, they want to get more value than what you're paying, you know, than what they're paying you. And the things that go without saying is the service and the product and the quality. And if they need support, are you going to pick up the phone and, and be responsive and, and partner with them? A lot of times for the long run, people are looking at not short-term relationships, but longer ones. You know, with employees, they've got more options these days and they're looking for the companies to be fair. You want to be fair, they want to be competitive, they want to be market priced, you want to have, you know, both in compensation and the overall benefit plan, the culture that you have. Um, and uh, we felt like they, they want you to be sustainable. You know, they, they know that uh, everybody's got to make money, money to be successful going forward. And uh, they want to know that they're working at a place that, uh, that will be sustainable. Thank Did you. Did I miss anything, guys? Probably. We're doing one minute summaries. We're not going to be able to cover our entire eight minute <laughs> conversation. So. All right. Uh, any of the other group facilities? I don't know how many groups were there, Amy? I don't know. There were three. Okay. So the other group, please. Well, I'll be speaking for one. We had uh, Mark Hegston, Robert Lodge, Angie Brick, and Sue Kramer in our group. And uh, uh, very similar to what Bruce's uh, group came up with, a lot of interdependency there. Um, and kind of as a summary statement, uh, we uh, kind of came up with a, a good mantra, and that's a successful growing company. It really operates on uh, well-established processes and procedures. And those are the things that create the consistency uh, in the operation. And communication is the key. Communication is the glue that makes things work for everyone. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Excellent, excellent. I think that was all three groups represented. Again, the inner relationship matters. The balance of this relationship is part of how your business operates and runs and it drives towards excellence. And this model supports the same things that Enterprise Minnesota does as an organization, supporting your business to make sure that we frame up the right pieces of your business to make it a high performing organization and they're connected. They are interrelated parts of your business. They're not standalone. That concludes our largest section, um, our most time spent this morning anyway. Really that first question, the interested parties, really letter I, who cares about your business? We've explored that in detail. The next section, I'm gonna give you the letter M to drive from. This is the management and leadership section. Which relationship are we focusing on? It's this one, that management is the role model for the organization. And you're focused on achieving results for those stakeholder groups. So management has to satisfy the who cares bucket. Three key thoughts around what management is responsible for. Your business strategy, aiming at the customer, what they need, and aligning the organizational pieces to make it happen, making sure that these three pieces come together. In the ISO terms, that strategy connection, that vision, mission, values of your organization is linked to what the ISO deems a quality policy. It's really the one paragraph, the one phrase that encompasses the tip of your spear that everything else is driven behind. This is an example from a company, I, I coded them called the good guys. Um, they built their, their mission statement around these principles. When, you, when they list out these things, they want to continuously improve their organization. Do you feel their customers being um, improved from this, that stakeholder group? Do you feel the business having its improvements driven? Are, is management getting what they need? And are the employees a part of this relationship? Their quality policy from the good guys focuses on those stakeholder groups. It's intentional. It is on purpose for them to do it. And for these guys, it helps 
give them unity of purpose. And it has also inspired and challenged them to measure the right things as an organization. And we'll link those pieces together in a short while. When we look at building these vision, mission values, um, this is an example, one style of a quality policy, an ISO term, an ISO uh, clause, an ISO relationship that supports an organization. The second part is, as we see from the state of manufacturing, which Enterprise Minnesota completed fall of last year, October and November of 2020, that focusing on your customers, two of the top five ways customers wanna grow, or excuse me, manufacturers wanna grow, new customers, new products, being innovative, focusing on those things, focusing on this relationship, taking care of that customer uh, stakeholder group, innovating for them, satisfying their needs. And when I think about focusing on customers, I want you to consider as a manufacturer, what are the two questions in customer focus you're thinking about? Who are they? Who are those customers we're serving? And what does it take to satisfy them? These two elements should be intentional in your leadership team under that M section five, focusing on your customer focus. Who are they and what does it satisfy them? What are their expectations of you? What do you need to deliver to them? How will you reach them? How will you satisfy their needs? Answering those questions and knowing how it fits together helps excellence appear. Again, your customers will not rave about average, but they will rave about excellence. The third point in management was employees putting together that organizational chart, aligning the resources and their roles and responsibilities to fit your organization. Uh, if you're an EOS traction team, this fits and maps into your accountability matrix. And again, from the state of manufacturing, we see that developing our people, focusing on growing our leaders, our second level leaders, our management is number five on the way that your company will grow, connecting back to those parts. So we've covered two clauses. I, interested parties, who cares about the business? M, the customer focus and the quality policy and the um, vision, mission values for your organization. Our third subset is gonna be P for planning, for planning. And planning really is a management responsibility. It is management's job to set the plan, set the trajectory, figure those pieces out through the organization of their system and their strategy. What do they wanna do? What do they wanna go for next? The planning has elements that everyone can relate to and every organization has them. Sometimes they're formal, sometimes they're informal. This is a plan. This is a plan my colleague and I put together for him to get from his house to the South Metro. Simple plan. But this plan has three parts that we need to be mindful of. Sometimes there are risks in our plan, things that get in the way and prevent the plan from being executed, things that may not satisfactorily be accomplished. We have intermediate objectives and milestones. In this case, the cities we need to visit. Maybe for you, they're your rocks or your BHAGs or some other method of getting there. What are those objectives you're going after to make your destination in your plan possible? And thirdly, sometimes plans need to change. We have to understand if that risk is in the way and we need to adjust our plan, what can happen around us? One of my colleagues from my past gave me a very little nugget that, I've, that stuck with me for a long time. The plan is the plan until it changes, but then it's still the plan. So we still need to get to our destination but our variation may occur. Our objective may move, a risk may encounter us. We may have to deal with a change, but we still have an objective. We still wanna get somewhere, maybe faster, maybe slower, maybe a detour, but we still have a plan to go after. When we connect to the state of manufacturing again, what's gonna help manufacturing companies grow? Number four on the list from the survey, strategic planning and implementation. What are we going to do about that plan to make sure our future is where we want it to be. This leads us to our next poll. In your organization, how do you manage those planning objectives? What is your method? How do you look at those goals? Thank you for launching the poll, Amy. We'll give it just a moment here and I'll grab a sip of water.
few more seconds. You can close the poll, Amy. Internal scorecard, number one. That's not one I see often, but uh, thank you. That's uh, usually it's other places. So that's surprised me. Um, normally it's not the most common response. And, and rocks, anybody who uses the EOS traction model and relates to that, that makes complete sense. There are ways. And synergistically matches very well with any ISO management system, the EOS traction tool set and tools and approaches. Thanks for sharing your feedback and information around planning. I, who cares? M, management takes responsibility. P, we put together a business plan. Let's move into the fourth one. R, for the organizational resources, the resources of the organization. What does the business need for resources to make it successful? How do we draw those pieces together? In chat, if you would, please. In these two manufacturing examples, what resources do you see? Technology, employees, skilled employees. I like that even better, Sandy. Thank you. Equipment. Thanks, Robert. Right soft. Thanks, Bruce. I don't know if this exactly is right soft, but we'll we'll give Bruce credit there. We see equipment, we see materials. A few other thoughts. You see infrastructure in a building, HVAC systems, lighting, electronics connections, IT systems and technology communication. We see work instructions and documentation posted. She has measurement tools for the electronic test she's running. There are lots of resources, equipment, tools, utilities, power, buildings, safety, instructions, documentation, IT, all of these resources are part of our plan, drawing them together. I am not gonna dive into every single resource type. I'm gonna focus on just one today, but being mindful that a management system focusing on excellence addresses all of these systems pieces, all these resource pieces. The one I wanna focus on and look at is just the people side, just the one resource, the one that was identified first. Um, the people are in our business and they drive it. The reality is we need people. They are lifeblood. They transform our products. They deliver our services. They bring value to our customers. They're creative with their solutions and ideas. They improve the business. They're engaged by management, coached to deliver, accountable and responsible. And when they're resilient, they act flexibly to help us achieve extraordinary results. When they're engaged, hearts and minds, they will rave about your excellence. When it's average, their engagement is challenging. And at the end of the day, procedures and policies are necessary for the business, but the ink on paper is transformed through people. It gets done through people. So we need them. Another example from our uh, magazine is States Manufacturing. They talked about why people matter in their organization. Here in their excerpt, you can see how they linked their vision, mission values, their core value into the daily work and culture of the organization, the people side of the business. When helping them implement their management system, uh, we were deploying their color prospect. And one of their second shift uh, machinists raised his hand and said, you know that R, that respect we have, 
I think about it this way. At the end of the shift, I put my tools away. So when the first shift shows up the next day, he knows where to find them. He knows they're all in good working order and he can do his job well because I have respect for his tools and my tools shared. Wow, I thought that was a pretty engaging side of how people are engaged in a management system and how that colleague gets their core value, what color means to them. We've worked through the plan. We've talked about who cares, management's responsibility. We've put a plan together. We've aligned the resources, the people, the equipment, tools to do the job. And now we're gonna step into O and we're gonna deliver inside the operation. Four parts planning, next part doing. This is where we spend most of our time. This is where you as an organization spend your energy, spend a lot, your resources are deployed here to deliver everything from the phone call to receiving your cash payment. How that works and how that functions, how they link together from an operational side, it needs to be part of that organization. We want to link together our business processes. Regardless of your manufacturing organization or your support of a manufacturing organization, you have these elements as key process steps, how they connect and how they fit together in that call to cash all the way from the quoting phase, all the way to delivery. They're part of your business, they're part of your organization. They're unique to your business though. Your equipment, your customer base, your technology, your location, your size, all influence your processes, but their themes are similar. But you're unique, so special ways to look at them for your unique business, but they're unique. Um, they are descriptive, but not prescriptive in this situation. And the reality is your processes like these are not independent silos. They are interconnected parts of your business. It flows, information, materials, and your business flows together. Whether you're in the office, whether you're at the machine, or whether you're delivering to your customers, it fits together. And continually improving these processes through good documentation, through continual improvement, Kaizen, through um, leadership, through talent development, through training, all of these things come together in delivering your process as an organization. All of these fit that operational element. You know your business intimately well. I'm not gonna cover and try to explain how the best deploy these things. You've worked on those. How do they systematize and come together? That's really what it feels like. And we think about and ask another manufacturer why they approached it from an operational standpoint. Here, our friends, Greenlight Coatings, Van Technologies in the Duluth area, they fit it together because it aligned their processes, that flow and sequence became theirs and they saw the connections and their people were able to focus their expertise within the process of responsibility. Small manufacturers, lots of hats for the same people, aligning the resources and the people and making sure that they deliver inside of those operations. So again, this is a link you can connect and see uh, through our magazine, which is available on our website as well. I, who cares, M management, plan, resources, and deliver in the operations. We've now delivered to our customer. It's now time for that reflection point. We need to use a little bit of data to verify and decide from. We've now done the work. Was it the right work? What are we measuring? What are we monitoring? How are we connecting those pieces together? Other ways of measuring, conducting internal audits, either internally or from your customer or on yourself. Conducting management reviews for the EOS folks. Those are your L10s and your quarterly check-ins. How those things fit together. How do they map and zipper up? What data are we using? Not to look at the rear view mirror. The data is nice, but what does the data tell us about where we're going when we look out the front window? Where are we driving this next as an organization? Your participation in a breakout room, this one will be about six minutes. What I'd like for you to discuss and share is when you have measures, metrics, and data in your organization, things that you use for 
key process indicators or key decision indicators, your scorecards, your uh, measures, what do your team members appreciate the most? Not you as leaders, what do your supervisors care about? What does your lead care about? What does your right-hand assistant care about for data to help them make decisions in the business? So uh, you'll be transported again through space and time to the breakout room. Your assistants to share for a few minutes. If the same facilitator would happily share, then I can keep track when we come back. What do your team members care about for measures and feedback within your organizations? Thanks. Getting people to show up for the uh, digital events can be a little bit of a challenge. There's a lot going on and everyone's super busy. So it's easy to not show up to these in a lot of cases. Yeah, I love the idea of checking in. We have webinars and so many people are interested and we get really excited and then not everybody shows up. So I'm <laughs> curious about checking in with people beforehand. That's a great idea. All right, welcome back. It looks like Keith, the crew is all back. There we go. All right, we're back up. Screen showing, I hope. Yes. Okay, it just portaled me in and out and messed up my display. So I had to do some quick <laughs> scrambling on the on the fly. Robert knows how that goes being the, the co-host mm -hmm. as well, that things move around when you're not intending them. In your breakout rooms, what did your what do your team members appreciate about the measures, the metrics, the scores that you have? So, uh, Mike, why don't you share your thought or two first, please? Yeah, one of the um, um, major um, core points that we were kind of discussing was uh, they need to be relevant. They need to matter. It, um, um, it needs to be the right stuff. Um, so. Um, and, and kind of uh, also people want to leave work every day knowing that they did a good job. They need to have that. You want them to have that good feeling, I guess. So the, the measurables as, as timely as they can be is important. Um, it has to be, um, um, has to communicate some message that um, these things are important to the organization, whether it's quality or output. Um, those are the things that I think employees uh, care about most. Uh, uh, Keith talked about the and what, so uh, you, you might even say, so what, you know, so you, you've measured this. So what does that mean? Uh, where do we go from here? Thanks, another group. Uh, Keith, I can go. Uh, we talked about, um, one of our group members there in ESOP, so they talk about uh, and show continuously how the production impacts like the bonuses and the incentive comp that employees can get. So they, the employees get to see almost real time the you know financial impact that they're gonna get out of their productivity and that's been effective. Another one is a quarterly incentive program that has weekly updates, um, so things like on-time delivery. So from the customer service standpoint, the on-time delivery is really good. And then from the internal standpoint, there's a benefit for the employees to be able to hit those numbers. Thanks, Robert. And the last group. Um, Keith, I'll go with our group here. Um, you know, we talked a, a lot of the same thing everybody else has covered, um, but making sure that, uh, you know, we had accuracy and relevant information. We gave it timely. Uh, it was uh, things that employees can use, being very clear about how we calculate them and they understand them. And uh, again, making sure we use them for like on-time delivery, accuracy, uh, you know, what our customers want with, on, you know, again, 
quality measures uh, and using it in, in, and some of us used it as well for uh, incentive programs, whether they be quarterly or we're implementing them, but again, that consistency and accuracy and timeliness to the employees. Communicating well in an open book. Thanks, Dan. I haven't seen you guys in a while. Maybe I'll have to stop in one of these days. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Was that all the groups we had three, Amy? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, team members care about data and management cares about the data because we want that evidence based decision from the organizational standpoint. What are we gonna use? Are we using production SPC? Uh, I know less in your metallurgical business, statistical analysis is part of your data. What about the charts and measures? The other thing I wanna ask you about is KPIs and KDIs. What are your key performance indicators? Rear view mirror, KDI, key decision indicator. Now that we know what is leading us to next, what do those think about? How does this data come together? This data links back to your plan. How does it connect? How do we fit those pieces together? These are just some examples. There's lots of ways to collect data around making this verification step, step nine for your organization. A brief poll, as your leadership team looks at your measures and looks at your goals and trends, yes, no, and how often? What is your cadence? What makes sense to you? Uh, those of you who announce rocks before, I presume it's gonna be quite common, um, maybe even weekly should show up here for some of those L10s, but your best response, if you would, please. About 10 more seconds. We can close the poll, Amy. One hundred percent say yes. It's regular to them. Wow, I have not had a presentation that looks that way. Thank, thank you for your dedication and commitment. That's fantastic. And then the cadence, monthly, and for those of you who do L tens, maybe weekly should be a choice in this case, um, and every three months. For Enterprise Minnesota and our organization, we are ISO nine thousand one certified. Um, our cadence is five large sessions a year, so about the every other month cadence um, from our management review standpoint, but each organization has to fit their style and their method. What's going to be good for them and their cadence? So thank you for sharing that information with us. I appreciate it very much. This brings us towards our last section. We've talked about I, who cares about your business? M, management, delivering policies, customer focus, and the organizational structure. We've built a plan, and even when it changes, it's still our plan. We've aligned the resources of people, equipment, and tools to deliver. We've executed an operations from that call to cash cycle for ourselves. And we've used V, the verification, and data to decide. And our last one, I'm going to teach us a little bit and spell out the word improve down the left side. Why? Because a 9001 or a business management system is an improvement system for your organization. Improvement comes together and improvement will yield excellence for your organization. These pieces fit together in this plan, do, check, act cycle to make excellence appear. And how does excellence appear? How does improvement happen? Let's step through a few examples before we close up for the morning. Again, that starting example, the plan, do, check, act cycle from Edward Deming, one of those improvement models one of those improvement styles are going about it, continuous improvement, Kaizen, et cetera. Improvement is intentional. And improvement is focusing on the baby step today because we are playing a long game. We are work working towards improvement, a step up. Every little day, a step of improvement, markedly driving towards our goals, markedly making it a better day, leveraging our people's talents and making continuous improvement an expectation of the organization. Not a nice to have, a have to have. Coming full circle, linking that back when we go to the state of manufacturing, what do manufacturers say is gonna be some of their drivers of growth? 
Number two on that survey, maximizing productivity. Continual improvement for the organization is an intentionality that will drive a company's future growth. Natural, inherent, and intentional in the organization. My last testimonial, if you will, is from our, par our partners at Northwoods USA. Why do they drive an improvement model? They wanted a better day separate from their competition and drive business performance through the entire pieces and elements of a management system. So we've talked through this plan do check act cycle using the improved model and mapped across the interconnected relationship for manufacturing excellence. These stakeholder groups shall be taken care of when you reflect on your organization or the manufacturers you're helping, do their employees feel it? Does the customer feel it? Does the business feel improvement? Does it rave about excellence? Does management drive and support these relationships to be successful? How does that come together? How does it fit? excellence comes through these interconnected relationships. So if I ask you to take action today, what's one thing you can do to improve your business management system? What would you think about? Some of you shared them in small groups with others. And, and then when, this is a call to action. This is a call for you to take action and say, what am I gonna do today to make it a better for our organization? If you're willing, share and chat. Um, if you want to write it down on your notepad to take it back to your court, uh, leadership team or to your peers, uh, please do. What will you do to improve your organization today? Enterprise Minnesota is happy to help manufacturers to leverage and improve their ISO management systems or their current management system to integrate if they went towards certification or the tools of ISO. Happy to help. I thank you for your time. If you want to reach out to me through chat or through my contact information on the screen, um, please do so. Would love to help you as a manufacturing organization uh, to have excellence and to have your employees, customers, and the business raving about excellence. Thank you, Keith. I think that brings us over to Les. Okay, I think we're back on. I really want to take a moment, uh, big, extend a big gratitude to Keith for being with us today and how, working, explaining how you can make things better with ISO. Uh, also, it's one of my closing things. I have doing a new approach to doing a lot of meetings. Encourage everyone to find today three items of gratitude that you have in the midst of what we've been through. So if you can work on that, even my day will be a big success. But I wanna thank everybody for being here and your continued support. And basically the presenter and, and myself and Amy will continue to be online. So as you go to log off, if you have a question or like to visit, feel free to stay online. We'll be here for a while until everybody has managed to uh, get their day underway. So with that, thanks everybody. Really good to see everybody. and. Just have a great week.